Hello, I'm Julie. I'm a, a, fan, a trustee of the Lindsay Legcom Foundation, and I'm here with these two lovely ladies who are going to introduce themselves before we start with the conversation. Hello, I'm Julie Rooney, and I'm the clinical lead for the Otley Leg Club, which is in West Yorkshire. Otley is a little market town uh, where I'm also a practice nurse. Hello, my name is Sue Gardner. I am currently working as a leg club nurse at Chevin Medical Practice. Obviously, I work with Julie and usually prior to COVID-19, we were running a leg club once a week. Um, my background's in general nursing, children's nursing and health visiting. So thank you, first of all, very much for your time today. We appreciate how busy you are. Um, but we've heard some really fantastic work that's been happening at the Otley Leg Club. So we'd really just hear, like to hear a little bit more about it. So could you start off by just telling us about the club, its sort of history and its background? Definitely. Um, we started the Leg Club in March 2018. It was a long process, as you can imagine. Um, but because of where we live, we did have um, Otley Action, which is a third tech set third sector voluntary service uh, with um, premises, volunteers and um, so I knew that we would be okay with getting started there which is what happened eventually. Uh, we did have quite a few problems with funding initially um, and getting people to help too so that's when Sue we after about a year we did get Sue in um, who had no experience of legs or hosiery or anything else. It was a steep learning curve, wasn't it, Sue? It was. I, I was good in health visiting after 30 years, but I was a bit rusty on legs. <laughs> she brings a whole new dimension to the leg club. <laughs> and so you've been involved with it, with the leg club for how long? Me or Julie? Me. Uh, probably about 18 months. Yeah, 18 months. But we have quite a few members, don't we, Julie? We've got about 297 members in total. 297? Um, wow. Yeah, and, and it's sort of split in between people who come for medical needs and their dressings and people who come for the social side. Uh, and we've got a cracking uh, social side to the club, haven't we? We have indeed. Yeah, we've got some fantastic volunteers. Um, we have one volunteer who plays the guitar. We have volunteers that pick the people up who are housebound on the, the bus, so we have access to that. So even if they don't want to come to have their legs done once they've healed, they can still come uh, and enjoy the social afternoon. Um, we have podiatry. Um, what else do we have, Sue? It's so long since we've been there. Thinking of all the um, um, allied foot health industry partners that are there, aren't they? And the yeah. district nurses. Yes. It's amazing. Um, it takes a village, doesn't it, they say? Yes. <laughs> um, and we couldn't have this conversation without talking about what's happened here and around the world in the last six months. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd be really interested to hear from both of you how that's impacted on, the, on your Otley Leg Club. Yeah, well... Like the same for everyone, we had two days notice that we had to close. That was on the Monday. Our leg clubs held on a Wednesday. Um, so we knew that people would be coming on the Wednesday. Um, we didn't know how many, what would happen. Uh, so we turned up. And I think we had two people that, that day, didn't we, Sue, the last day? Oh. Uh, the district nursing team were fabulous. They literally took their patients back. Of course, we had a lot of patients that would be shielding. So we had to arrange for the district nursing team to just literally take over, which they did in 48 hours, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. And we had to close. That was the last afternoon that we've been there. We were due to um, move our premises because we're in um, a very old building that at the moment is being refurbished um so we were actually set to move to a community clinic i think it was the week after and all that was put on hold too so at the present time we've no premises um 
with no leg club as it was, but I will leave soon now to explain what happens or what has happened in the last few months because I was determined to keep Sue and we'd got funding for her, which was, you know, a real big um, mountain to climb. And once we'd got that, I didn't want to say, we can't, you know, we can't use you, Sue. So this is what Sue does now. So we decided, um, we looked how many people we had coming regularly each week to the leg club. And it was actually something like nearly 40 people every single week. And it was roughly divided 50-50. So 50% were coming for the social activities, the sing song, the raffle. Um, afternoon the, the, the Afternoon tea, they get cakes, ham sandwiches, um, various little goodies. And the other 50% were obviously coming for leg dressings, moisturising, fitting hosiery, the actual dressing side of things, or podiatry. Um, so we decided it was a great opportunity whilst the club was shut, just to have a look at the numbers on the leg club, to see what sort of care people were getting, their thoughts and feelings about the leg club. Um, and to see whether they felt that their needs of their legs were being met. So we just, I just did a little bit of a telephone call around um, the 19 people who needed um, medical intervention to see what had happened to them. The district nurses caseload had gone up immensely by about 30 or 40 percent so they were taking on all of the patients who were having to shield or to be housebound and seeing them at home. Um, our caseload as practice nurses had gone down a lot and 40 percent of people who were having dressings had to self-care and, and we paved the way for that for them to self-care either teaching them how to do their own dressings, wearing hosiery that they could fit themselves, um, or if they were able to do dressings themselves, that was the, the other thing that they did. So that was one aspect. Um, we looked very much at whether people thought they were having the needs of their legs being met and over a third said they didn't feel that the needs of their legs and feet were being met and on questioning um, they said things like oh my toenails are growing too long curving over and I can't cut them or the elastic's gone in my hosiery and I can't get any more so it was all things that we could support with and we could help provide things um, for their or met health needs, which, which we did. Um, the other aspect that we talked quite a lot about was what leg club had meant to them. Um, you know, were they missing it? Is it something they enjoyed? And, and it was just amazing that the stories that they came out with, like Julie said, they get if they can't walk or they can't drive, they get door-to-door -door transport on a minibus, which they do pay three pounds for, and that's provided by Otley Action. So they said things like that they were missing the banter as a start-off on the minibus, the laugh and everything with their friends, the missing meeting their mates. Some people said it was the only time that they got out every week to come to the leg club, which I was totally shocked by the fact that that's their social event for, for the week. Um, they said how much they enjoyed um, the contact with the nurses. They felt they were getting good nursing care. They liked the fact that the district nurses were working with the practice nurses and the leg club industry partners so that they felt that we looked at different ways of working and we made sure that they, we got the right treatment for their leg. Um, let me just tell you another couple of bits because I was blown over by this. They, they felt that it was a very informal setting and that their mental health needs were met because not only were you just looking at people's legs, you're asking them about them, about their families, you know, what have you done this week? And it was really interesting 
the things that came out, a lot of people were really down and really sad, which is obviously associated with having a long-term condition like um, venous leg ulcers or, or arterial leg ulcers. But um, yeah, it, it was like a, a real social event for them. It, it made their week, yeah, um, and very much enjoyed it. Few people didn't like it. It wasn't all positive. Some people said they didn't like um, the the old building and there was no facilities for disabled people and the other aspect was they didn't like the fact that there was very little privacy because as part of the leg club we try and give some confidentiality but it's certainly not private you can see people's legs unless you specifically request to be behind a screen um but some people didn't like that they wanted to be seen on their own in private with the door shut um, we learned that very early on didn't we really that that could be a problem and um, so there were people that didn't want to come for that very reason um but on the whole the people that came kept coming you know they just kept coming back and inviting the friends and some people even brought their dogs and um, it was just a really nice social afternoon for them and we did promote self-management quite a lot mm. in which our industry partners were fantastic they were there every week and um, we were doing dopplers too of course so yeah and we've tried now on a wednesday afternoon to keep the same times so that uh, we can contact people that we used to contact or used to visit the leg club. Um, and we still do our dopplers, um, fit for hosiery and dressings uh, for the legs on a Wednesday afternoon specifically, which means we can keep Sue employed until hopefully we get back to um, our brand new premises and a whole new leg club. And that's, that takes me quite nicely onto that question. And I know at the moment, nothing is certain in terms of the future. And for your club in particular, because you don't have your original venue and we've had COVID in, in that time. So what do you, do you have any idea of how the leg clubs will look in the future in a sort of post COVID era? We've tried to think about it. We've tried to plan. Um, but until we have new premises anyway, which won't be until next spring, we can't really we can't do anything. If we can't run the leg club as we've run it in the past, um, you know, due to social distancing or maybe just having two or three people there at one time, again, we don't think that that would be viable mm. for the simple reason. In general practice, we've got all our facilities here, which, you know, we, we can provide privacy, we can provide social distancing it is an appointment system obviously yeah. which is what the leg club wasn't yeah so we wouldn't want to you know go to appointments only because what would yeah. be the point of but, course yeah. Yeah. and yeah. one of the real key aspects of the leg clubs is that social side and supporting um we see a lot of loneliness among um people that are likely to have those particular needs um, and is that something that worries you in terms of caring for their sort of mental health needs as well as their physical needs? Very much so. Um, so well, I think we talk about the leg club and all the things that that brought to the community and, and the area that we live in. It's really sad mm. that obviously we can't run that and we can't have that support for people because emotionally it helped them tremendously. Yeah. Um, and I would like to think, I mean, I know the numbers are going up by the day, aren't they, at the moment? But I would like to think maybe in the next six months, once we have premises and it's open, we can get together, um, the practices, the district nurses, the Otley Action, infection control and look at some way it might not be run in the same way but and i know it's got to be run safely um but there must be some other way of, of, of running it that hopefully can try and meet some of those needs again rather than just having it in the surgery like we have it at the moment it's really sad it is it is 
and I hope that people can, will come together and, and maybe share different ideas and suggestions for a new way of working. And, you know, we've all got to adapt and change to this new sort of social distancing approach to life, which isn't really natural for any of us. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to come up with some solutions. I think even the process that you talked about of calling uh, members up and having that conversation with them on the phone, while it was useful for you to gather that information, I'm sure it was a, a massive bonus to them as well to be able to have some social interaction. Even if it's oh, they just love it. I mean, we're very fortunate, both Julie and I do work for Otley Action. We volunteer for Otley Action in our spare time, but people are very appreciative, you know, and we phone them most weeks uh, as a social contact. And sometimes, you know, it's understandable they're very down and they're very lonely, but you can't get them off the phone. That They're constantly on the phone. They just want to talk to you. And it doesn't matter about what, anything, reminiscing. They just enjoy that. Mm. So there's a real social need out there, but we need to make sure, obviously, it's a safe environment yeah. for all. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm wary of time, so we'll wrap up. I just wanted to ask you one more thing to both of you as health professionals working through COVID, how you're coping and if you've sort of found any coping mechanisms to help you get through this very difficult period. Well, I think for me, because um, I wasn't furloughed, I worked from day one. Um, and Sue obviously came in uh, almost immediately to the surgery too. It, we've not known much difference really. We've just had to get on with it. I think there's been, um, there was a lot of fear in the beginning. I have to say being the age I am, mm. um, that initially I just thought I, I, I don't want to be working in this sort of an environment. But as time has gone on, you know, it's sort of, it is the new normal. So, you know, people can't just now come into the surgery. They have to have an appointment. They have to ring first. Um, and like Sue and I now are working in different rooms. We can't work in the same room. Not without full PPE anyway. Mm -hmm. And... That's and the there, are, there are new ways of working, aren't there? You know, like taking photographs of, yes. of wounds, which yes. we should have probably done before anyway, but, but using um, additional things on, on System 1 where we can send um, text messages to people and they can reply with a text and a photograph back to us. Um, and we, we still have the support, which I could not manage without, from the leg and industry partners, because we still need to fit wraps or hosiery. And that wasn't something I was familiar with doing on my own before. So every Wednesday afternoon, we have like a hotline to um, one of the reps who helps support. I do lots of measuring, and then she tells me exactly what size hosiery or wrap systems we should be um su supplying for, pay for people and then they come back and we make sure that they fit them correctly so their their support's been invaluable to us as practitioners as well Absolutely. yes yeah. and it's amazing how many people we've managed to um, encourage um self-management which at one time when they were just coming into the surgery we were dealing with the legs and they were coming back and you know it could go on for a long time where in the leg club we have had good healing results which i put down to the fact that the service industry partners were there foot, foot care people were there and um we really did push self-management and we, yeah. we had the time to do that so yeah, it works <laughs> yeah absolutely well thank you both so much for your time really appreciate thank you. it um, and all of this and lots more information will be available in the Legs Matter Lounge. Um, and we, sh we wish everyone for the best for uh, Legs Matter Week and going forwards. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Yeah, cheerio.